Okay, so we we shouldn't panic, but we shouldn't not do anything, right, Paul? What can we do? I bet I guess is the real question. Well, the first step, obviously, is to see yep. if there are asteroids out there that might hit us. <laughs> I guess it doesn't help if we don't know where they are. Yep. And so this was something that the U.S. Space Guard program has been doing. Yep. Using a bunch of telescopes like this one in um, the Catalina Mountains, north of Tucson, Arizona. I used to observe in the Catalinas when I was a postdoc at Stewart Observatory, um, and telescopes with wide fields of view that go around and what they do is they basically take photographs of large chunks of the sky every night and look for dots that move okay so here is a dot that moves most of the things you see here are just background stars that are hundreds of light years apart but you can see and this is kind of how the first one was discovered back in the 1800s right that's For a right. dot moving across the others the these stars. are much fainter you're not yep. going to see these with the naked eye on telescope you need a highly sensitive detector um, but people do this yep and spot these things and they have large automated pipelines now when you first spot it all you know is it's going this way yep. but you then trigger an alert this will give you a rough idea of how far away it is and which direction it's moving yep. so you could then issue an alert and get other people around the world to turn their telescopes on it yep and by the time you've got you know, two or three days worth of observations of this thing you can start pinning down its orbit that's right because i guess you have enough measurements over enough of its orbit figuring out how fast it's going, how far away it is, yep. what about its size? They normally look at opposition, which means, let's say you're the Sun and I'm the Earth, it means I look this way. Yep. That means the Earth is moving faster than the asteroids, the asteroid will appear to be moving backwards. Yep. A bit like the retrograde motion we yep. talked about for Mars earlier on. And so how far backwards it's moving depends how far away it's going. Yep. So this is probably moving backwards, so the Earth's going this way, okay. and the amount of backward motion gives you a rough estimate of the distance. Okay. Um, so you do roughly the distance, you know, roughly the speed, yeah. then with more measurements you get more precise, you start refining an orbit. Okay. And most of the time that orbit is not going to take it anywhere near the Earth ever, at least not for millions of years. Yep. But every now and then your orbit says, well, it could be somewhere near the Earth in the year 2457 on the 3rd of January. And I guess this is an important point people always miss, is even when we say it may come close, the level of uncertainty of measuring the orbit is a lot bigger than what people imagine, right? Yeah, so to begin with, when you've only got three or four worth, days' worth of data, your orbit has enormous uncertainty. So it might be, there's the Earth, we know it's going to go somewhere here <laughs> a thousand years from now. Most likely it'll be over there or over there, but you could get a one in 2,000 chance That's right. to getting close. So what happens is most of them, not even that, but a reasonable fraction, just because you're estimate of the orbit to begin with is so poor, yeah. has some chance of hitting the Earth. Now, they used to publicise these things. They discovered that people were freaked out about this. Um, so they're now, if it's just this very low chance when the orbit is very runny, uh, very approximate, they don't publicise yes, it. Yes, that's right. They just say, OK, flag this one for follow-up. Yeah. And what that means is lots of other telescopes, including some of our own around the world, will say, OK, this one is potentially hazardous. It's got a small chance of hitting us. We better watch it long enough to make now that pin down its orbit more precisely. Exactly. And when you make more and more of these observations from different telescopes around the world, you pin down the orbit and discover it's going to go over there. Yeah. The most chaotic ones are the ones that come close to the Earth, because as they come close, that distorts their orbits, and yep. next time they come back, they can be a different orbit. So we really have to monitor and them every And a very time. slight change in the position can make a big change into how much it's distorted. Yeah. So anything that's going to come close to the Earth, it's not normally the first close encounter that's a problem, it's the second or third or fourth depending how it got deflected on the first one. Yeah. And to do that, you need a very precise orbit. Yep. So they make the more precise measurements and find out what's going on. Okay. And what do you see? Well, to begin with, the, the aim was to find the asteroids bigger than a kilometre. And so those were the ones getting to the size of... Continent busters up to planet blusters. That's right. So a kilometre one was knocking out a big country. Um, uh, Ten kilometre ones is you know, like the dinosaurs. dinosaurs. Yeah. And we reckon there were probably a ballpark of a thousand of these things out there. And we've discovered about 95%. Okay, so now. we're actually pretty good at discovering those big ones. And none of these big ones is currently on a orbit that brings it anywhere near the Earth in the foreseeable future. Okay. So in fact, the risk of the big ones that used to be one every 10 million years is now maybe... 20 or 30 times less than that. Okay. So it's about the same reduction as your risk of dying of COVID from having a vaccine. Okay. We've Fair now enough. been vaccinated against big asteroids okay. by the this, this search. Now, what about these middle ones, the 140 meter ones? So, having found the big ones, people decided, well, okay, we're not quite sure how dangerous they are, but they could take out a city or something like that. So, yep. it's probably worth trying to track those ones down. And that's what people have been looking for 
very comprehensively. They're much harder to find because they're, they're smaller small. and therefore yep. fainter, which means they have to look closer to the Earth to see them, which means you have to wait longer because you basically have to wait for them to come close to the Earth. Yep. Um, and But people are doing that, and we now reckon about 40% of those have been discovered. Okay. And currently, there are a few that are being watched while they try and get more precise orbits, but we're not really looking at any with a, as a, a serious impact probability. And we're just seeing more overall, and I guess that's because we've gotten a lot better at finding the even smaller ones, right? Yeah, they're kind of like uh, side catch. I mean, yeah. we're not really aiming at the smaller ones, but if they happen to get close, we'll see them. That's right. And you might as well pinpoint their orbits to make sure they're not going to hit as well. That's right. Um, so you can see the dramatically increasing numbers. So here's how many were discovered in 1999, not very many. And in ten 2009, years yeah, 10 yeah. years later, we found a lot more, mostly the big ones at this point. That's right. And then if we jump to 2018, there's an awful lot more of these things. And this is purely because of our searching rather than... It's not as if there are more asteroids yes, suddenly right. appearing out of a wormhole somewhere uh, or out of the asteroid belt. We're just getting better at finding the smaller ones so we see more of these things. Yep. And we're also tracking them down with spacecraft. Yep. There have been proposals to have dedicated asteroid finders. None of those are currently funded that I'm aware of. No. Uh, but this one, which is actually a spacecraft called WISE, which was intended for something quite different, was repurposed after it ran out of coolant. That's right. Remember, we talked about for the James Webb Space Telescope having its sunshade to keep it cool. This was an infrared telescope that kept cool by having a flask of liquid, I don't know what, liquid helium probably. That's right. But it ran out. It ran it out. Yeah. But it could still work at some wavelengths after that. And it's now being used as an asteroid hunter. Yeah. They found actually it's very very good at finding asteroids because they're looking at for that inter infrared reflect reflected light. Yes, yeah, so it's good actually working how big they are, whereas yeah. um, w when we see one optical wavelength, they're not quite sure if it's big or just shiny. That's right. So here we can actually work out the size. So you say, hey, we know all these orbits, pinpoint them. That's right. So this is part of why we're now finding most its ground-based telescopes at space-based ones are certainly doing a lot of it. Yep. The ones we're missing are the ones that spend most of their time in orbits closer into the sun than the Earth. Ah, because it's kind of like in our blind spot, right? Yeah, because to begin with, people look, tend to look outwards because it's easy to see them then because it's the middle of the night. Yep. Looking towards the sun is difficult because you have to look low and towards sunset just after dawn or just after that's right. uh, dusk. And that's uh, a difficult time uh, and difficult observations to make. Yeah. And so the 5% of the big ones that are still missing will be the ones that are closer in. Okay. And there have been speculations about how we might look at them. It might want to put a spacecraft in a closer in orbit. Yep. Um, they'd be orbiting Venus and looking outwards from there to spot these things or in one of the Lagrange points closer in so it can see these ones that we can't see because we're dazzled by the sun. Yeah. But people are also doing their best by looking close to dawn and dusk light to try and whittle those ones down. Yep. But if there are any left that could hit us, that's where they're going to be. The odds are now much better than they used to be, um, but it, it could still happen. Okay.